Hello everybody, welcome to Peaky Plans channel. Here I've got a couple of uh, computer pins alongside with plastic and also another with uh, steel parts. You can see mostly here is pins with plastic and over there also plastic and uh, steel on the computer like VGA ports and USB ports. Here is an example of clean pins, plastic remove and as you observe there is only tin and little gold plating on the tip. Actually they are very low grade pins that are made of brass. To process those you need lots of chemicals to digest base metals and leave the gold foil behind. First I need to figure out a way to get the pins out of my plastic and pins mix. And here I have good and bad stuff mixed in this bucket. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and pulverize the rest of these pins using the hammer mill machine. To minimize the friction between the materials inside this hammer mill for the pins not to lose any gold or at least minimize the gold plating being peeled off by action of the hammers. And this is a, a screen with a smaller diameter, which uh, I decided not to use this one. First, I'm going to uh, start with uh, grinding these parts to tear off the steel part and release the pins materials inside. I opened up the hammer mill to see what's going on inside and I saw something interesting. The pins fallen out of the tray and the steel parts remain into the tray. That's a good result. But there is an issue with that. After accumulating enough steel inside the hammer mill, it's gotta get jammed and to prevent that I need to evacuate it time to time. This way I can separate good materials from the bad materials. Good materials would be sorted into the bucket and bad materials, which the majority of them are steel cover, would be inside the other dish. I put the screen back inside of the hammer mill and then I continued milling the pins to get all pins hammer to be separated from the plastic. Here is crushed materials ready for gravity separation. I tried to separate metallic fraction from the plastic through the flotation in saturated magnesium sulfate solution, but it seems it wasn't successful for all plastics though. So I decided to use my pan to wash the plastic out. As the result, almost clean pins with the plastic removed. Actually, this is a shame such a low-grade pins 
not worth the time and chemical, but I'm really curious to find out how the gold yield is. By the way, let's find out. I did my best preventing gold flakes coming off in milling process, but some came off though. I'm going to add this to the same batch to be processed with the pins. Some of the plastics still was containing pins. What I intended to do was processing them separately. Alright, after grinding and separating through the gravity separation using a pan, this is what I've got almost pins but still there is some piece of other metals from the computer ports casing but uh, I tried to remove as much as I can the magnetic materials after panning here is the magnetic materials and as you observe they look rusty which means they are mostly made of iron and it's rusted after getting bedded through the panning process. Before going any further, I'm going to weight these pins up and to see how much pins we got from about 40 pieces of motherboard and about 5 kilograms of uh, CD-ROM PCB. Well, it's heavy enough, but they aren't good quality pins, though. Let's see how much gold can be recovered from this stuff. Low quality computer pins. Two kilograms of pins from computer low grade pins I've placed all the pins inside this PP plastic beaker and uh, I'm ready to uh, start processing this before that I'm going to show you this this is my product gold stripping agent when I was uh, researching on uh, making gold strippers finally I found uh, compound that works really well and also I applied my composition and my method to be patented uh, I got this ready for sell uh, in a small and limit batches I'm making this for sell and uh, now I'm going to use this and for my Iranian friends I should say that بچه ها با این پود میتونین روکش های تلا ها مثل برده های مثل تلفن همراه و پین ها رو به راحتی حل کنین و به راحتی بازیابی کنین این اینو به مقدار معدود موجود کردم و اگه کسی خواست میتونه توی این استاگرام یا تلگرام به من پیام بده پیکی پلنز رو سرچ کنید میاد حالا لینک ها هم اینجا زدم ولی متاسفانه توی پرینت خیلی بزرگ نیفتاده یه برگه اختارم داخلش گذاشتم که حتما اینا رو باید رعایت کنیم و جدی بگیریم و نکته دیگه هم که هست یه کپسول داخل این ترکیبه که محتوای این کپسول خوردنی نیست یه وقت اینو نخورین یه جای نذارین که یه وقت در دسترس کودک باشه این در واقع ترکیبیه که بعد این که ما طلا رو حل کردیم انحلال بیشتر طلا رو متوقف میکنه و رسوب دهی با پودر روی رو ممکن میسازه And uh, for my dear friends here uh, I'm going to explain what actually these are This is a cap containing the powder which I call it a stopper which stop reaction when you uh, done stripping the gold you want to reclaim your gold using zinc powder you add this before processing with zinc this will stop the further the solution of gold in cementation process and uh, yeah 
and here is the caution paper in Persian language and uh, play, let's place it aside okay let's uh, make up our solution and uh, start processing these pins to see how this is gonna work and how the yield is for this type of pins also this is about 100 grams in the pack I'm going to dissolve 100 grams of this powder in one liter this is the sweetest spot for this solution to work with All right to make our solution I add one liter of water to this flask this is hot tap water you don't have to use distilled water for this purpose all right one liter and now let's add this powder to the water regardless of what chemical you are handling it's always good idea to do that under fume hood and wearing the gloves the transfer the powder to the flask into the flask all right and now let's stir it to dissolve all soluble parts in water and also let's ouch let's rinse the the powder stick to the walls and uh, twirl it to dissolve more components as possible a stirring is needed about uh, for about two or three minutes occasionally and after that you just need to let the powder settle down and decant the solution while the particles in this solution is being settled I'm going to place it on the hot plate preferable temperature to work with this stuff is about 4 40 degrees Celsius so I place it on the hot plate to prevent the temperature uh, the crazing and uh, as you can see the particles are um, floating in the solution they will settle down after the reaction become completed in this flask it's better to let this settle down and after that you can do the filtration but what is more important here uh, the filtration isn't necessary at the solution preparing stage but it is highly needed and recommended to be done before dropping the gold preventing the impurities form in the solution and the zinc powder now let's leave this for a while and getting back after that after about 10 minutes the solution is uh, not crystal clear but acceptable to be used for leaching purpose so let's add this to the pins without hesitating after adding leaching solution to the pins I'm going to track the time using this stopwatch usually for this type of pins as I did some tests pin doesn't need to set in the solution for more than five minutes it's usually done in two minutes though let's see I add solution to the pins slowly do not take the precipitated materials out
I hope this one liter cover all the pins completely otherwise I need to add some water it's almost power all the pins and now let's start stopwatch also I've already prepared some solution here this is diluted solution of this powder I'm going to add enough just to cover the pins it's about 25 seconds pins are placed in this solution also as the indicator there was a gold plating um, socket here which has been leached almost leached completely let's show you the golden layer is gone probably this is happening to majority of pins inside this beaker and uh, as I can see there is no more pins with gold plating on the top at least on the top and this is about and it's not being two minutes though the stripping process is almost done I'm going to leave this these pins inside for more some more minutes to make sure everything being stripped completely and um, yeah nothing more left to be stripped as I see and it's done in about three minutes now let's decant the solution for such a low grade pins you really don't want to leave your pins inside this solution for a long time this solution has um, inhibitor for copper but it will uh, prevent copper the solution up to a certain point after that copper start start getting dissolved in the solution so it is not recommended to leave this on the low grade pins for more than five minutes and now let's check the pins out to see how they have been stripped as you observe majority of gold plating is gone except for some few pieces and uh, there is some rust on some of these pins actually and uh, just few pieces uh, haven't been stripped completely some pieces like this one I think there is an oxide film forming on these pins after getting wetted through the gravity separation using the water and uh, this is the reason they have not been stripped completely maybe it's a good idea to leach the pins per your the leaching with this composition being leached with hydrochloric acid very dilute hydrochloric acid to make sure everything every oxide film being leached using the dilute hydrochloric acid but I can say it's about 
99% of pins been stripped successfully. Now it's time to recover gold out of the solution. Here are the pregnant solution. Pretty muddy. And uh, before do the filtration, I'm going to add this powder which I referred at the first of video. This is actually a stopper to prevent further the solution of gold while cementing. This is important to be added before filtration because uh, it will form some insoluble particles which needs to be filtered up. Now let this settle down for a while and after that uh, I will get back to filter this out. Well, I've switched to gravity filtration with paper tissue. Uh, in these cases, I prefer paper tissue over filter papers because uh, they provide more surface area for filtration. It is much faster than vacuum filtration. And you can see the stream coming out of the funnel much faster than gravity filtration and the solution is crystal clear. To start cementation on zinc, I need to first acidify solution. I do the cementation in two states. First one in a, a little bit acidic medium and the second one is being done uh, in alkaline solution. So uh, to get the sweetest spot for pH we need, I'm going to add some uh, dilute hydrochloric acid maybe uh, somewhere around between 5 to 10 percent. 10 percent is way too much. Around 5 percent concentrated hydrochloric acid uh, being added to the solution to the point the solution pH should be uh, between 5 and 6. Uh, we, we don't want to go lower than 5 and uh, also 6 is good enough. So I start adding Dilute hydrochloric acid. Also solution is getting muddy due to the some chemical coming out of the solution but this is uh, okay. Let's check the pH at this point. It is still a bit basic maybe around 8 and uh, the pH is around 4 or between 4 and 5 that's good enough to start cementation Let's see what's gonna happen in there. 
here is 5 grams of zinc metal to be added to the solution to start cementation agitating will help a lot in this process to accelerate this process indeed Retention time in acidic pH totally depends on the reaction which zinc powder go through and when we get the solution, the pH of around 6 to 7, the cementation uh, in acidic pH is done and we have to alkalize solution and after that the solution will get uh, clear again. And uh, now I need to leave this to react to the point where the pH become slightly basic or near to the natural pH. Right, let's check out the pH again. And it seems to me this is pH 6. Now it's time to alkalize solution to do the second stage of cementation. This time the pH needs to be go up to the 14. I'm going to use sodium hydroxide to reach the high alkaline solution pH while stirring is on now as you can see the solution starts to turn clear gradually now in this point of uh, reaction we are going to do the cementation in alkaline solution if we haven't add the stopper which we added earlier uh, the gold forming on the zinc would be in struggling solution to get turned back again into the solution and now uh, we are we already know that this not gonna happen now you can see the bubbles coming up to the surface of solution which means this is at this pH we have found the sweet spot for reaction which is pH 14 I'm going to add some more zinc powder maybe 3 grams of fresh zinc powder this will cement out last bit of gold remaining in the solution I usually stop this reaction after about 30 minutes now let's leave it to react let's show you something interesting about zinc cementation uh, you can see the fresh zinc color it has a silvery appearance but and uh, much dense than the that black stuff here actually the black stuff here is the zinc which gold cemented on and it turns to a fluffy form I let the solution stir with the zinc powder for one hour and I added some more zinc powder I added three grams of uh, zinc powder and now I let this settle down as much as possible uh, still there is some zinc and gold suspended in the solution which I'm going to filter this and recover it later from the filter 
now process the zinc at the bottom for the gold washing step is very important to get uh, rid of all alkaline solution before acidifying solution to digest zinc powder as you can see here there is some zinc and gold floating in the solution it's trapped here All right here we have a dark zinc cement with a fluffy appearance this needs to be washed prior to adding acid to it just lightly being washed just in case to not form any byproduct contaminating gold powder alright zinc powder definitely carries carries gold on it this can this is obvious with floating form of zinc and some pores in the zinc powder actually the uh, amount of the zinc volume is increased comparing to the uh, first volume of zinc I've added let's transfer this to a beaker before pouring the excess water I need to let this settle down for a while and then pour off the excess water and start additioning the hydrochloric acid to release the gold all right the zinc powder being washed with water and also I've added the water to the uh, funnel to catch any possible zinc particles now it's ready to add hydrochloric acid to start reaction the reason I'm using hydrochloric acid is that if the solution needs to be purified and refined gold this can easily be done but when you add nitric acid you have no choice to remove lots of excess nitric acid that will come with some cost definitely all right It seems addition of a little bit concentrated sulfuric acid in this solution will accelerate zinc reaction remarkably and uh, I can now I can see the gold particles are floating in the solution Alright guys, reaction almost done in this speaker and you can see the voluminous black stuff in there. Uh, I'm not sure if actually these are gold. This is too much for that low grade pins. Uh, I think I've got some copper also alongside with gold that needs to be refine let's find out 
I need to filter this off and uh, then trade it with Aquaregia to see actually what material we are dealing with. This is a concentrated hydrochloric acid which I'm going to dissolve this in the Quaragia. I've preheated hydrochloric acid and now what I'm going to do is to transfer filter paper to the speaker. Let's dump it in and uh, yeah. Now I'm going to add nitric acid drop whites to dissolve any possible goal in this solution. And also here is some filter paper I've used. It seems there isn't much gold in it. Also there is a, some purple hint on the filter paper. So this doesn't worth to be processed now I will add this to my filter papers to be processed later and uh, now it's time to add nitric acid to this solution to reconstitute the aquaragia yeah it's it seems it's actually working and solution is turning yellow Now let's test the solution with the stannous chloride to see if actually we get any gold from this uh, here. Yeah, the test is positive and we got the gold. Filtration repeated a few times just in case to get clean drop out of the solution. Due to the washing filter papers, solution got diluted. I placed it on the hot plate to evaporate some water. Some sulfamic acid added to kill remaining nitric acid. Then I added ferrous sulfate, letting it sit in there, no stirring, to grow gold on the ferrous sulfate crystals. To get gold out of the pulverized plastic with the pins stacked in, I decided to not go ahead and uh, pulverize it more than it is. I just added some uh, uh, powder to this solution, uh, my composition to make up a dilute solution and also I've added uh, a copper inhibitor composition for this purpose because this is a dilute solution and this is gonna take longer than a few minutes. Till now it's about two hours I've left this uh, inside I've left the pins inside uh, the solution with the bubbling help with agitating solution and the result is uh, good let me show you something and uh, yeah this is a right piece look at this the pins inside uh, are being stripped completely 
in about two hours it, and, and and this process is about almost done and I'm about to the can solution and trying to recover gold from to see how much gold we missed in this process zinc cementation done for this batch same as the previous batch all right this is the gold recovered from these stuff here these are pins mixed with plastic here is the gold recovered through this process here is the gold from the clean and metallic portion of pins separated through the milling and washing and here the gold from the remaining pins in the plastic part uh, I'm going to weigh them together to see how much gold is possible to be recovered from about um, more than two kilograms of pins, maybe two and a half. This was about two kilograms and some remaining in this. So I assume that it was two and a half kilograms of pins. let's prepare this mini scale turn it on all right all right 103 milligrams of gold recovered from about two and a half kilograms of computer pins separated from a motherboard and CD-ROM boards let me know if really there is a way to get money out of this uh, I'm not sure it's possible and uh, I prefer to uh, not process them at all while the recovery method I've used, uh, I'm sure I got, I've got about 95% of gold out of this process. And here is a part you can see. This resemble what did to all other the pins. This was gold plated and is stripped completely. Also, I have uh, some pieces that I've tested interior and errors of my method you can see this is a CPU which the pins are not gold plated anymore and here some example of pins that uh, was a strip in this process hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video please don't forget to like share and subscribe and stay tuned for my next projects till next video See you next time.